In this video, I'm going to talk about what poles are, why they are bad, and how to work around them when subdivision modeling. So what are poles in the first place? Well, a pole is defined as a set of six or more edges that converge at a single vertex. Now that we've defined what a pole is, let us look at why they are bad and why you should avoid them when subdivision modeling. So I've got two similar objects here, and if I were to select the one on the left hand side, and jump into edit mode, you can see that we have a pole at the cap here. Whereas with the one on the right hand side, we have a quad cap. Now if I were to select the one on the left hand side, that is the one with the pole, and I activate the subdivision surface modifier, you can see that we get some pinching and we've also got a bump in the middle right there. So if I were to do the same thing with the one with a quad cap, you can see that it shades quite nicely. Now let's look at another example. So I'm just going to bring up these two bottle caps. So the one on the left hand side here, it's quite subtle but you can still see some pinching that takes place radially at the edges here. Whereas with the one on the right hand side, you can see it shades nicely, no artifacts whatsoever. So if I were to jump into edit mode, you can see that the culprit for this is the pole right in the cap here. Whereas the one here has all quads and shades quite nicely. So you can start to see why poles are a problem. Therefore, when subdivision modeling, it is best to avoid poles as they can cause pinch surfaces upon subdividing your mesh and also yields undesirable and unpredictable results when your model undergoes any kind of deformation during animation. So how do we get away with using them or working around them when you inevitably encounter them in your models? Well, let me show you. So I'm going to go ahead and hide these two bottle caps as well as the domes here. And I'm going to bring up these two identical meshes. I'm also going to select them and activate the subdivision surface modifier on them. And I'm going to select both of them in shade smooth. So right off the bat, you can see that we encounter a problem with the one on the left hand side. You can see that we've got a crease running right through the center of this. And we've also got some bumps and pinching on the sides. The reflections are also quite distorted, whereas with the one on the right hand side you can see that the reflections behave as they should and the shading is correct. So let's look at the topology and analyze what the problem is. So we can see that we actually have a pole right on the edge that is being smoothed here, whereas with the one on the right hand side we also have a pole, however the pole has been isolated from the edge that is being smoothed and as a result we don't encounter any kind of problem. As long as you isolate your poles from areas that are going to be smoothed, you should be absolutely fine. So some solutions are to hide them in areas not visible to the viewer. It is totally acceptable to have them on planar surfaces as I have already demonstrated. They are acceptable on models that you know are going to be shown far away from the camera and you can ignore the presence of poles when working on in-game models and on objects that are very small in scale relative to the entire model. So the last thing I would like to mention is for those of you that are planning on working in animation or VFX pipelines or even selling 3D assets on an online marketplace, it is important to pay attention to topology as it is an important fundamental for 3D artists. So that's it for this video. If you found it informative, give the video a thumbs up. I'd also appreciate it if you considered subscribing to the channel and sharing the video with someone you know that might benefit from it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.